Allison Eby, and I work under Dr. Stephen Cowan to, on a new project that is focused on figuring out the mechanism of ketamine, or special K, as a treatment to the levodopa-induced dyskinesia, which is um, a Parkinson's treatment, which I will get into. So one of the first questions that I get asked is, well, what is Parkinson's? Um, why is it happening to my loved ones? And to really understand it, we have to go into the brain. So there's this one part in our brain called the substantia nigra, and it's responsible for making and creating dopamine. And dopamine is super important for our everyday movements, um, such as walking, cooking, um, and playing sports. Everything from simple to complex, it's just regulating and maintaining it <clears throat> Sorry. for a smooth transition from one thing to another. But since Parkinson's is a neurodegenerative disease, the cells in the substantia nigra are dying. And when that happens, there's no more dopamine being created. And as you can imagine, that has detrimental effects such as the characteristic hand tremor of Parkinson's, uh, sleeplessness, uh, confusion, and bradykinesia, which is slowness of movement. And so obviously people were like, well, this is terrible. We need to do something about it. And they did. They found a similar thing called levodopa. And it's almost like a sister molecule to dopamine. It acts as a substitute. And it did. It got rid of all these symptoms of Parkinson's, although it didn't stop the degradation of cells, but it acts as a substitute for it. But in science, nothing ever works the way that we want it to, and it never works perfectly. So bad things started to happen after long-term use, such as uncontrollable movement. And this is called dyskinesia. And since it's levodopa-induced dyskinesia, we call this LID. And LID was just so terrible for people with Parkinson's that they didn't even want the treatment anymore. They just wanted the Parkinson's symptoms, which is really heartbreaking for scientists because we're supposed to be making their lives better, right? So what we did was we looked for a treatment, and that treatment we came to a fork in the road, blah, blah, blah. Um, that was supposed to be funny, but I kind of flew their head on that. Huh? But um, so we decided to either create a new treatment or treat the side effects of levodopa. And we decided to treat the side effects of the treatment. And what we found was ketamine was like basically the holy grail of drugs. It had like Basically, it's non-toxic. It had no other side effects, like off-target side effects. Uh, it actually helps with depression, and it's a pain reliever. Um, most people know it as like a horse tranquilizer, and the street stuff is like the daybreak drug. But we're using it in low doses, so everything is OK in that respect. Um, but we're scientists, right? So we want to know why this is happening, because we gave it to the patients, and they're totally fine, right? But we need to figure out why. And since this is getting into the brain, we have to look at the neurons, or the nerve cells. And we need to see how they're changing and how they're reacting to this drug. And to do that, we have to get into the brain. So we're getting into a rat's brain. And as you can see on his head, that's a little implant, and with that, we're going to be recording his neural activity. And this implant is special because it can get close enough to nerve cells to actually um, record their action potentials and see how the characteristic of that nerve cell changes after we give them ketamine. So both before and after we inject them with this drug, we're going to be recording their neural activity to see how cells react to it. And there's a lot of different types of cells in the brain, and they're all important, but we're looking at a couple. So the first one we're going to be looking at is called an interneuron, and the second we're going to be looking at is called a principal neuron. And these are both distinct in their action potentials. 
as you can see. So the intern neuron, you can see it's very spiky, it's very narrow, and it's fast. Whereas the principal neuron has a greater amplitude and it takes a lot longer for this action potential to occur. And by looking at both the pre and post injection of our neural activity that we record, we can compare the drug effects to see and try and find if there is an effect that can lead us to the mechanism of this drug. And by this point, you're probably asking, like, well, why do I care? And I mean, that was something that was hard for me to come to as well. Um, but the more that we understand a mechanism, the better drugs we can create. Because that was one of the problems with L-DOPA for that treatment was that there were a lot of off-target consequences that induced dyskinesia. But if we start to really narrow down this mechanism, we lead to a better medicine, which leads to a better quality of life for all the people who will be given this drug.